During this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to set up the Release Notes plugin inside of Jira. Once we have the plugin installed, we'll see that we have Release Notes down here on the left hand side inside of our navigation. And once we click on that, we'll see that we have setups, templates, and so forth. As of right now, we don't have anything inside of our setups. So we'll get started with that first. We're going to go ahead and click on create inside of our setups. Once we do that, we are redirected to the setup screen where we have some information that we need to go ahead and configure. The first being the name of this setup. I'm going to go ahead and call mine new version release notes. Now this can be anything you want it to be. So feel free to get creative. Now, right next to that, we have the trigger. Now the trigger is what needs to happen in order for this setup to be executed. We have a few different triggers that you can choose from. We have the release of a version, the close of a sprint. We can set it on a schedule an interval, or we can manually execute this setup whenever we'd like. So just like it sounds, if we do release of a version, anytime that we do a release of a brand new version, this setup will automatically take place and send out the correct information. If we were to change this to close of sprint, anytime that we complete a sprint, this setup will be executed. Same thing for the schedule. We can set this date here and so forth. So in my case, at this moment, I'm going to leave this on release of version since I did name my setup new version release notes. Just below that, we have our email filled. We have our to email. We can also add a CC, BCC, and a reply to email. We have the subject of the email, the body, and the template attachment. So let's get started with the subject of the email. You'll notice that we currently have a variable in here. You can remove this variable if you'd like, or we can leave it there and add additional information. Now inside of the subject, we can add any text that we'd like, just like this. And we can also add additional variables. If we go over here to the question mark and we click on it, we can see the different variables that we can use inside of our subject. So we have the setup name, the release date, the version, and the sprint. Now the version only works with the release of a version trigger, and the sprint only works with the close of a sprint trigger that we talked about earlier. However, the setup name and the release date work with any of the triggers. So let's go ahead and copy the release date here. And once we have that copied, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to delete this and I'm going to paste that in there. So now if I were to trigger this setup, the subject line would be dynamically updated with the setup name, which is this here. And it would be automatically updated with the release date, which will be automatically grabbed depending on whenever this setup was triggered. Once we have that configured, we can then configure the body however we'd like. And again, we also have variables here that we can use. So I can do the setup name once again. I can then change this to make it a little bit bigger, like a headline heading one. Then I can drop down here and we can add more variables. Maybe I want to add the version just like so. And then maybe I want to add the version description. So I do that and then I add the version description. Now, similar to the variables that we use in our subject line, the version and the version description will only be used and populated if we are releasing a new version. If we are completing a sprint, these will be left blank inside of the email. And same thing for the sprint and the sprint goal. If we release a version, these variables will show up empty inside of the email. However, if we complete a sprint, these variables will be populated with the correct information. So make sure that you are using the variables that are relevant to the trigger that you are setting up inside of your setup. And then we also have the release date that we can include. And then we have template content. So with that, let's go ahead and move into the template and we can cover exactly what that is, what it looks like and how to use it. So as of right now, we have our template attachment and we have the general template, which is the pre default template that comes loaded into the release notes plugin. And this template can be delivered in PDF, HTML, or both of them at the same time. However, we're not sure what this template looks like. So let's go ahead and save this setup 
and we'll come back to it here in a moment. Right next to setups, we're going to click on templates and we'll see the general template that is automatically included with release notes. If we ever want to create a new template, we can simply click on create and that's going to open up the template creation wizard. But let's go ahead and go back and take a look at the general template that we already have. We're going to click on edit so we can see exactly what this looks like. If we want to, we can change the name of the template. And then inside of the editor, you'll notice that we have a logo icon here. We can click inside of this box, then click on the image icon here, and then we can upload our own business logo here that will be included inside of this template. You'll notice that we have our setup name. We have a sprint and a version variable, and I'll cover this one here in just one second. We also have the description that will be automatically populated. And then we have some fields down here. We have our new and improved and our bug fixes, and these are using JQL blocks. So if I am to click inside of one of these blocks, and then I click on the gear icon, we can customize these blocks however we see fit. So we have the show headers option, the show borders option, and the show icon option. Next, we have the ability to remove any of these columns if we don't need them. For example, the assignee, if I don't want to use this, I can simply click on the trash can icon and remove the assignee from this block. We can also add other fields. If we click this drop down menu, we have a large variety of fields that we can add to this block. So let's say that in fact, I do want to add the assignee. I'm going to click on assignee. I'm going to click on add, and that's going to add it back. Then we can rearrange it by putting our mouse over these six little dots. Then we can click and we can drag and place it wherever we like. Now you'll notice that key and summary are actually blue and they're clickable. That means you can actually click on these inside of your template and be redirected to that ticket inside of Jira. If you want to make something else clickable, all you have to do is click that little link next to the field and it will be automatically clickable inside of the template. Next, let's go ahead and click on the JQL tab. And this JQL block comes with a preloaded query we like to use inside of this block. This query filters out the Jira issues and populates the block for us. Also, you can use sprint and version variables inside of the query. For example, if your trigger is close of sprint and you want to filter out the issues only from that sprint, you can use the sprint equals sprint variable here inside of your query and the variable will automatically be replaced with the sprint name when you complete this sprint. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK and it's the same for the variables that we've set up here. So when this template is used, the plugin will automatically check to see if it's a sprint or a version and this information will be automatically populated dynamically depending on the trigger that was used. Same thing for the description. It will automatically check to see if a sprint or a version was used and automatically update that information as well. Now that we understand what the templates are, let's go ahead and save this and go back inside of our setup. Inside of our setup, one of the variables that we can use is to actually include the entire template inside of the email. As of right now, we are attaching a PDF document and an HTML document to the email that can be opened up to take a look at the template. However, we could include that template inside of our email. So I'm going to delete this information here. I'm going to go to variables and we're going to do template content. And what that's going to do is inside of the email itself, it's going to populate that template for us. Now below this information, we have integrations. We can integrate directly with Slack, Microsoft Teams, Confluence, or any other custom URL. If you need assistance with integrating with any of these options, simply click on that option and then click on the help icon in the top right hand corner and that's going to redirect you to a help page that walks you through exactly how to configure that specific integration. Now that we have all of that configured, the next thing we can do is we can actually execute this setup on our own by simply clicking on the execute button down here at the bottom. And once we click that, it's going to execute the setup for us and send it to the email that we configured inside of our setup. And that is going to look just like this here. 
So as you can see inside of our subject headline, our variables were automatically updated with the setup name, which is new version release notes, and the release date, which is December 1st, 2022. Then inside of our email, it was automatically populated with the template that we set up and configured inside of our template settings. And of course, here at the bottom, we have our HTML and we have our PDF document that we can download. Now, I would like to show you how I can actually trigger that setup to happen automatically. So since my setup is based on the release of a version, we're going to go inside of our releases. We are going to create version. We are going to give it a version name, a start date and a release date, and our description. And we're going to click on save. Once we have that created, we are going to go inside of our issues. I'm going to go ahead and select one of our issues here. For the fixed version on the right hand side, we are going to change this to version 101. Then I'm going to change this to resolved. And once we have resolved that, I'm going to go back inside of my releases. And for my brand new version, we are going to go ahead and release this. And we are going to release. And now that we have released a new version, our setup that we configured is going to automatically trigger and send us another email with the template that we created. And just like that, we received our email. We have the setup name, the date, and then inside of our template, we have a list of the issues that we fixed. And that's just how simple it is to set up the release notes plugin inside of Jira. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to our support team and we'll be glad to assist you.